Hey kids! Hey kids! Hey kids, thanks for checking out the Treehouse Takeover. Before you get watching, we wanted to tell you a little bit about what the Treehouse Takeover is. It's our online kids worship service filled with music, teaching, and all sorts of fun. Every week, we get to hear one of our family church kids pastors or ministers teach us a message from God's Word. Family Church is made up of a whole bunch of different campuses. And each one of those campuses has their own kids ministry. Run by their own kid pastor or minister and has their own kids who go each week. Kids who are just like you. Just like you. Just like you. This means that there are so many different people who care about you and want you to know the truths of God's Word. That's right. Every single one of our neighborhood churches has their own unique Treehouse Kids Worship Service. And you can be part of it. Check out your local neighborhood campus every single Sunday morning where you will get to experience live worship through music, teaching, and giving. You will get to see friends, memorize Bible verses, sing songs to Jesus and about Jesus, play games, and learn more about discovering and pursuing God's design for your lives. Parents, make sure to click the link in the bio to locate your nearest neighborhood church. We hope to see you real soon in person. But for now, enjoy watching the Treehouse Takeover. And remember, we love you. We love you. Que nosotros te amamos. We love you. But more importantly, God loves you more. God loves you more. God loves you more. Pero mucho más importante, Dios te ama más. Hey, hey, welcome to the Treehouse. We're super happy you tuned in today. You can say that again, Mr. Mike. Hey, Miss Gina, I had such a, a blast these past few weeks with our Christmas and New Year's celebrations. You know, time flies when you're having fun. That's true, but we have a lot to look forward to in the new year. Every day is such a gift from God. Amen to that. Speaking of things to look forward to, we're starting a brand new series this week entitled High Stakes. We're going to hone in in our uh, giving and how our neighborhood church makes a difference. Yes, and there's a responsibility and a joy in playing a part in God's work here in South Florida. I feel honored to be a part of it. Me too. All right, I don't know about you, but I can't wait any longer to find out what's going on in today's treehouse. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. What's the point, 2024 edition? Hey boys and girls, hey Kenny, how was your new year? It was great, I set some good goals for myself. Like what? Well, I set a goal to dig 365 holes one a day, say one kind thing to my mommy each day, mm -hmm. and come up with the best points for what's the point? Wanna hear today's big idea and the point? Those are some pretty decent goals, except for digging 365 holes. You might want to talk to your mom about that, but I would love to hear the points for today. Okay, here we go. The first big idea of 2024 is God is the owner, we are the manager. I love that big idea, Kenny. We say that every week. Everything we have is from God and we need to manage it all well. From our money to the stuff we have, even our time and our bodies, all of it is from God, and we can manage it well. What are some points for today? Yeah! Point number one is we must manage well. Like I was saying earlier, we are all managers, but that does not mean that we are all good managers. We must be intentional and manage well. What about point number two? Yeah, point number two is we must manage with the future in mind. While it's important to make sure we're managing for today, we also want to think about our choices and decisions and how that can affect our future, either that's for good or for bad. Yeah, okay, you ready for the first question of the day for 2024? Absolutely, I cannot wait. Here we go. We must manage mm -hmm. A, responsibly, B, quickly, or C, newly. 
I think I know the answer to that one. Oh yeah? What do you think it is? We must manage responsibly. We must take responsibility for our choices and ask for help from others, like our teachers or our parents or our pastors and church leaders, and ultimately God to be a good manager. Yeah, you're so smart, Miss Lovey. Standing still, no more going back. Oh, your love is moving me. I came alive, came alive when you found me. I'll never be the same. Oh, oh, oh. I shouted out to everyone around me. I am forever changed. Your love is moving me, moving me. You made all of these cookies? I, I did. I've been working all night on them. Aren't they beautiful? They, yeah, they look really good. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, look at, look at the green one right, right over there. Which green one? The, the, the green one with the, with the sad face, or the green one that fell into the world's largest puddle of sprinkles? No, no, the, the regular green one. I mean, it looks just like you. Look at all these sprinkles. Like some of them are shaped like snowflakes, and some of them are shaped like Christmas trees. I'm glad we have scientists working on this kind of stuff. Oh. The sprinkle just fell right in my mouth. How did that happen? Did it taste good, though? Of course it tasted good. It was a sprinkle. Oh, there's some more that fell. Well, oh, you want right to know why I made all these cookies? Yeah, I mean, how long did it take? I mean... I've been working them all night, but you see what happened was the two-ass president, he asked hold, hold me... On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Six cookies does not take all night. What have you been doing? Well, no, this is my last and final batch, Mr. Steven. Oh, well, how many batches did you make? Like two or three? Um, try like 300. Get it. No. You did not make 300 batches of gingerbread cookies. I did. You see, the Treehouse president told me to uh, take the Treehouse uh, credit card. You remember those credit cards he gave us? Uh-huh. And um, he told me to go buy cookie supplies. And yeah. um, we should uh, we should have a big cookie party for the new year. Yeah, but... And, uh, but we still need to take these Christmas decorations down. I mean, it's been over, over like two weeks. I know, but there's a difference between a big cookie party and a big cookie party. 300 batches of cookies? Well, How yeah, many cookies but, did but, you make? 
But, but guess what I did? What did you do? I decided that my New Year's resolution was yep. one cookie every morning and one cookie every night before bed. Hey, that's not a bad idea. I've not heard of anyone with a cookie New Year's resolution. I, I know. So what I what I did is I took all the cookies that I baked. Yeah. And, um, well, I decided instead of a cookie, uh, a party for, for a Love All Survival project, that I would, uh, I would keep them back at my lily pad. I, I sort them underneath some Wait leaves to keep them safe. And then I will have a cookie every morning and every night. Hold on. Did you say instead of a Love All Survival project? Well, yeah. I think the president would uh, appreciate my uh, New Year's resolution. Hold on. Hold on a second here. You're telling me the president told you to make a bunch of cookies for a Love All Serve All project, and you did, but now you're not going to use them for a Love All Serve All project? Yeah, and I stored them all back in my lily pad underneath some leaves to keep them safe. Let me go take a picture. I'll show you, okay? Okay. I'll be right back. All right. Weird. introduce to you the memory verse that goes with this new series and then we're going to stand up together and we're going to say the memory verse two times with the motions. The new memory verse is Luke 16 13 which says no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. All right boys and girls Stand up, and we're going to say that together with the motions two times. Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. All right, let's do it one more time. Luke 16, 13. 
No servant can have two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Great job, boys and girls. You keep practicing that memory verse. Happy New Year. I'm going to try one of these just to make sure they're still good. They're not. I do not like gingerbread. How did that happen? Not at all. Uh, oh, what happened? What happened? Did you, uh, did you just get back from checking your cookies in the swamp? I did, and you're not going to believe what happened. Well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me see. So you're gonna just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing here. Um, you went to the swamp outdoors yeah. in yeah. the where it's all wet and full of bugs. Yeah, that's where I live. I eat those bugs. Yeah, and that's where you stored your cookies in the swamp in this gross, wet place, right? Well, I hid them underneath some of the, the leaves to keep well, them safe. Please tell me what happened to the cookies. I would very much like to know. Well, you're not going to believe it, Mr. Stevens. I bet you I will believe it. I got there, and what I, I left them as like a nice, beautiful stacks of freshly baked cookies. But yep. when I just went back to take a picture to show you, uh -huh. it was just a big pile of mush. Yeah. And, and the mush had flies flying all around it. And normally I love flies, but it was kind of disappointing because they were flying around this big mushy pile of cookies. Yeah. And there was there was maggots crawling all around. Oof. That's the worst. The cookies were really interesting. Gives, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. Cookies are a temporary situation, Hermit. You either got to get to eating or get to sharing. But you can't let them sit around, especially not in a swamp. So That's just I, not going to turn I, I out well. I them all for myself, Mr. Stephen. I was going to eat them all year long. Yeah, but, but how did this start? What did the president tell you to do? Well, he told me to buy and make a bunch of cookies. Make a bunch of cookies for who? Um, well, I, I guess he, he told me there to do it for a uh, Love All Serve All project, I think. That's right, so not for yourself. No, I guess not. Yeah. So and you I, thought you could take control of all these cookies and do something just for yourself. But that didn't work out really well, did it? No, I guess they were never really mine to start with, huh? That's right. Uh, Mr. Steven? Yeah? Is, is it true that you and your daughters would do a lot of baking at Christmas time? I, I am a pretty good baker. I made some uh, peppermint swirl cookies this year, and I just made some thumbprint cookies not too long ago. Oh, that, that sounds lovely. Um, do, you, do you think maybe, possibly, you could uh, help me fix this situation? Help me bake a bunch more cookies for this Love All Serve All project? Yeah, we'll, we'll fix the problem here. I think what we could do is we could make some sugar cookies. I have a, uh, maybe like in the shape of a flamingos. When Ooh. you decorate them like that, they're That'd all crispy. Nice. Yeah, it's really good. I, I guess the gingerbread cookies are a little too uh, gingerbread -y. now that Christmas is done, huh? Yeah, and... People just pretend to like gingerbread. Nobody really likes it. Uh, you know what? I think you're right because this was my last batch of gingerbread and, and, and I didn't like them at all. Yeah. All right. So sugar cookies it is then, right? Oh, yeah. Love hey, sugar cookies. Hold on. Let, let me see. If, here. You try one of these sprinkles. You tell me let what you think. Open up. Ah, oh. ah. That was my finger. Goodness. Oh, that one tastes really nice. Yeah. Um, there's no more sprinkles. Sorry. What? There's, there's a bunch right there, Mr. Stephen. I don't see them. Give me another one. All right. Just one more. All right. Hey kids, can you even believe all that happened in the treehouse today? Hermit was certainly caught up in his piles of gingerbread cookies. And then he didn't even want to share them with Stephen. Well, between the ants and the stale cookies, that didn't last very long. Sometimes, just like Hermit, we can get caught up in wanting or acquiring a lot of stuff. I have to admit, having things that I like can be fun. Shopping for new things, even more fun. But as you might guess, these things don't last. Have you experienced this too? Like maybe those amazing Christmas gifts you were waiting for, they've already broke or you're quickly bored with them? Maybe you feel like your friends have all the expensive cool stuff and you don't. Well, let me encourage you today with our big idea. God is the owner and we are the managers. Today in our Bible story, we find Jesus being approached by someone in a crowd that wanted half of his brother's money, and he wanted it right now. But because Jesus has perfect wisdom, he looked at this man and said in Luke 12, 15, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Just like this man, we often believe that having more of something is better than having less. We go through life trying to collect more money, more possessions, and more of the things that we believe will make us happy. But Jesus knows better. 
So next, in this story, Jesus decides to help this man by telling him a parable. Remember, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So let's go ahead and read this parable from Luke 12, verses 16 through 21. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose, they will, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Did you hear what just happened in this parable? God is reminding us that our treasures are not the things we're supposed to store up. Jesus even calls this man a fool for doing so. For when his life is over, he will leave everything behind. Verse 21 redirects us to the only riches we should store up, being rich toward God. That's right, boys and girls. We can go through life trying to collect more money, more possessions, and more of the things that we think will make us happy. But having more of something isn't what brings us true happiness. True happiness can only be found in Jesus, loving him, learning more about him, and serving him. Kids, because God is the owner, we can trust that he will give us what we need exactly when we need it. And as the managers, we can enjoy and take care of the things he gives without constantly wanting more of it. God has promised to supply all our needs, and he did that when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. He died and was buried and rose again for us so that we might be forgiven. Trust God today to supply your need for a Savior and be forever satisfied in Him when you believe. Let's pray. Dear Father, help us to be content with the blessings with which you have given us so generously. Help us to take good, of care, of, take good care of the things that you have given to us. And Lord, mostly help us to be on our guard against wanting stuff that other people have and not to feel sorry for ourselves when we don't have it. Most importantly, help us to be satisfied in believing in you and having a relationship with you. You are an eternal gift to us. We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, Mr. Mock. I gotta say, Miss Wendy's lesson really helped us understand that ultimately God is the owner of everything and we're the managers. We need to be good stewards of everything God has gifted us with. And think about the big picture, God's plan for us in this world. You hit the nail on the head, Miss Gina. Boys and girls, God also has a plan for your salvation. But don't worry, Jesus did the work already. That's right. God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sins through his death, burial, and resurrection. When you believe in what Jesus did for you, you will be saved. And kids, if you recently placed your trust in Jesus as your Savior, please let your parents, your kids, pastor, or minister know so that we can help you take those next steps with your walk with Christ. Exactly, Mr. Mike. Well, kids, it's been great being the church together. Let's go be the church out there. There. And don't forget, we love you. But more importantly, God, God loves, loves you, you more. more.